I've been amazed how many people spend an awful lot of money on a DSR and use it on automatic. Well, this is the beginnings of how to change to manual. This is going to be about aperture and aperture priority. Um, so let's get on with it and we'll, uh, I hope by the end of the lesson, you'll be confident enough to try and go on to the semi-automatic aperture priority mode. This is the main control wheel of a camera and it's got lots of symbols on it. But for this video we're going to stick to AV. Now AV on a Nikon or an Nikon would be A. Um, now why it's AV on a Canon I've got no idea because what it means is aperture priority. So we'll switch over to the AV and that's done just by turning the little wheel. So now what does that allow us to do? Well, aperture priority means that the photographer is responsible to choose the aperture he wants. Now the aperture is the amount of light that comes through the lens, as you see here. And when we change the aperture, what we're doing is changing the size of the hole, if you like, in the lens. And as we make the aperture smaller, of course, less light is coming through the lens. And I'll show you at the end the advantages of doing this rather than just letting the camera decide on its own what it wants to do. Now this is known as a semi-automatic mode. Now by semi-automatic I mean that the photographer chooses the aperture and the camera will choose the shutter speed that goes with it to get a correct exposure. So it's halfway to using a camera on manual. Let's have a little look now in the camera and see what it looks like. Well, on the back of a camera, things can get very complicated. So there's an awful lot of numbers. So I'm just going to stick um, just a piece of paper over the things that aren't important to us at the moment. And then we'll have a little zoom in so we can see what we're going to do. Well now we're going to start with the camera um, switched off, we'll switch it back on, we're in aperture priority and now what you'll see is that if I change the aperture and there I'm increasing the aperture, the F number, the one that's here, if I increase that what happens is the shutter speed which is over on the other side gets longer and longer. So the camera is deciding the shutter speed as I change the aperture. Now these shutter speeds are very very long because I'm shooting uh, or doing this test in the studio uh, where there's very little light so um, we'll have to live with that. This is 13 seconds as you see. So by choosing a, a very wide aperture or a low F number we get this type of result which gives us a very out of focus background and also a fast shutter speed that allows us to stop any movement. And I think you'll find that's a really pleasing effect and uh, I like it a lot. And this is what a lot of people are striving to get. But we've got to remember that this is a very expensive lens um, and some lenses won't give you that result. So let's have a look at a cheaper type of lens and we'll do this on and off. And that's the type of result you can get with a cheaper lens. This is called depth of field. Well, depth of field is really the amount that's in the photograph that's in focus. So this would be shot at a wide open aperture. Something like, let's for example say f3.5 or f4. And this would be shot with a fully closed aperture. Therefore the background becoming more in focus than the version with the fully open aperture. Let's have a look at some photographs taken on a very good lens. And these will be shot, or have been shot, at a very wide aperture, maybe even fully open. Now, it gives that professional look to a photograph that normal amateur photographs don't have, particularly on this one, that I really like. It really puts the background out of focus. This one, a street scene, the same thing. Now while AV is probably the mode that a professional will use the most, unless he's a sports photographer, but I'll go on to that in another lesson, um, AV is very, very useful to a pro. But there are dangers, and this is one of them. Well, what's happened here is that I've uh, been merrily closing down my aperture to get the little boy in focus at the back, or trying to, 
and I've not been keeping an eye on my shutter speed and my shutter speed has become too long and therefore when I take a picture I get movement of the camera so always try and make sure unless you're on a tripod of course always make sure that your shutter speed is at least as long as or short as your focal length is long so if you have a hundred millimeter lens make sure your shutter speed is at least a hundredth of a second or faster and then you'll avoid this although it's such a bad image that it's got something isn't it it's it's almost becoming a masterpiece Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I showed you the advantages and the disadvantages of shutter speed. But there's one more thing, of course. You've got to be careful that your camera doesn't go out of range, because it's not automatically going to change the ISO either. Now, the ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor in the back of the camera. But that's another lesson. I've got a lesson on ISO, and I've got a lesson on aperture. So it might be wise to have a look at those other two lessons. Come see us on itchyvoter.com or mccordle.com, uh, both interesting sites, and we'll get together soon again. Bye!